I spoke at rallies and rallied the media around what the governor was doing to our state. And I spoke on the assembly floor about the fact that you don't have a middle class without the labor movement. While the people of Wisconsin were standing up for their rights, Governor Walker was cozying up to every corporation and right-wing stink tank in the nation. We stood with the middle class, and he stood with the Koch brothers and the corporate interests. And we knew there was more to his plan. When he left out police officers and firefighters from the attack, we knew these were temporary exemptions. So they joined our fight. Let's give a nice round of applause to those firefighters and police officers. And we knew many companies in the private sector were waiting to do the exact same thing to our private sector unions as he did to our public sector ones. Hell, if the governor can bust unions, why can't they? So what happened? Our brothers and sisters in the private sector unions stood up as well. Let's take a nice round of applause for all of us for standing up. But we were much smarter than the governor was. We protested. We fought back, and we started the process to recall Governor Walker. And I am proud. And I am proud to announce that we gathered over one million people to sign recall petitions the largest in this nation's history. Now in just 35 short days, the working families of Wisconsin are going to look Governor Walker right in the eye and proudly hand him a pink slip and say, and we're going to tell the governor, Governor Walker, you go back to the Koch brothers and your corporate cronies and you ask them for a job. Because as Donald Trump would say, you're fired. It's because this is a government, this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And corporations aren't people, and neither are right-wing special interests. We the people, we're the people, and we're taking our state back. Now as Sean mentioned in his kind introduction, I'm running for Congress. And you might ask me, Mark, why on earth uh, would you want to leave Madison, Wisconsin, where you've had one of the best jobs on the earth? <laughs> 14, well, 14 years ago, I asked my union, the Painters and Allied Trades, what I could do to help my union. And without hesitation, I was told, run for elected office. So I did. And with the help of my union and Scott Vaughn and all the building trades in Madison, I won. And I have gone to work every day in the State Assembly with one thing on my mind. What can I do today to help my constituents, my brothers and sisters in the trades and in organized labor, what can I do to make our lives and our jobs better? What can I do to ensure that they'll have a job to go to tomorrow? Yeah. And this is why I wrote, I fought for, and I passed the Wisconsin American Jobs Act, which ensures that state dollars don't go to companies that outsource jobs overseas. Now let me take my campaign and elected official hat off for a second. I'd like to talk to you as a union member about the good of the trade union movement. Generally, working men and women who come from labor are the best advocates for our brothers, our sisters, and our families. Union men and women know the importance that building, constructing, and sweat means to this country that we all love. And it shows up in the work you do on the job, but it also shows up when we elect our brothers and sisters to office. In my humble opinion, there are not nearly enough tradesmen and women in Congress. In fact, I can only think of three of the 435 members of Congress who came from the trades. Steve Lynch, an iron worker from Massachusetts, 
Linda Sanchez, an electrician from California, and Bob Brady from Pennsylvania. In fact, Congress doesn't exactly look like the people in this room. 47% of Congress are millionaires. Now, unless you have got a really good contract, I am guessing that that doesn't represent the people in this room or the districts you live in. For the most part, far too many in Congress are the 1%, not the 99% of us who get up each day to pay for our mortgages, our health insurance, and put food on our families' tables. This year, we can change that because we have great union members running for the United States Congress, and I implore you to do all you can to help them. We have a great Teamster. We have some Teamsters in the house. We have a great Teamster running in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And while it's a bit of a hike to get up there, we need to get up to the UP and help Gary McDowell. Is anyone here from New York? Oh, I guess you got a few people from New York. Uh, my union sister, Elizabeth Crowley, Another IUPA team member is running in New York's 6th Congressional District. Let's show our brothers and sisters in labor that we support them. You know, when my good friend Tammy Baldwin decided, not, went, decided to run for the United States Senate, and I had the opportunity to throw my hat in this race for Congress, I went to John Jorgensen, the business manager of IUPAT District Council 7, and said I wanted to do more for my union, more for my brothers and sisters, and I wanted to go to Washington, D.C. And they helped me get organized from day one. And thanks to their help and the help of so many other trades and others in organized labor, we are poised to elect at least one more union member to Congress this November. Thank you. We have so much to do in this nation. We need to stand up to the bad trade deals that send U.S. jobs overseas and to companies that try to hide their profits abroad and instead reward companies that want to create jobs right here in the USA. We need to fully revive the economy and if that needs more stimulus dollars that create infrastructure and jobs then that's what we need to do. Invest in our infrastructure. It worked before, and it will again. In the year 2012, in the most prosperous nation on the planet, it's about time that we make sure every man, woman, and child has access to quality, affordable health care, regardless of preconditions. It, preconditions. Isn't it about time? Absolutely. And I'm sometimes embarrassed that the author of the plan to privatize Medicare and Social Security is Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan. You can do that again. <laughs> But let me tell you one thing, as long as I have a voice and a vote in Congress, I will do everything possible to protect Social Security and Medicare and strengthen them for generations to come. But unfortunately, unfortunately not everybody thinks that way. Multi-millionaire Mitt Romney is the presumptive Republican nominee and it's time we gear up to take him on. But I gotta tell you, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. He can't help flip-flopping on every issue because I have a theory. It's a rich guy problem. You know, if you wake up and can't remember which one of your three homes you're in, you're gonna end up flip-flopping around until you figure it out. And if you go to the store and you come out and you can't remember which one of your caddies you drove there in, you're not gonna be able to remember which tax policy you supported or opposed, which parts of the healthcare law you wrote or you didn't write, and whether or not you're for or against letting Detroit fail. He's got a rich guy problem. But we have a better way. I know the people in this room are some of the hardest working and most dedicated people I know. If we all work extra hard in the next several months, we can do something really special. We can tell the uber wealthy and the corporate special interests that they don't run this country 
we do. We can flip Congress and make Nancy Pelosi the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Can we do that? We can elect Tammy Baldwin and Elizabeth Warren and others to the U.S. Senate. Can we do that? And we can make sure we finish what we started and re-elect President Obama and Vice President Biden. It will be the working people of this great nation that will stand up for the 99% and get this done this fall. Now, are we going to let the House Republicans privatize Medicare and Social Security? No. Are you going to let Mitch McConnell pass more bad tax cuts for the wealthiest like the Bush tax cuts for the rich? No. Are you going to let the 1% that fund the ads that promote one of their own Mitt Romney win in November? No. Then, brothers and sisters, let's get ready for the fight of our lives this fall. Let's send a deafening message. We are the middle class. We are mad as hell, and we are taking our government back. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for victory this fall. Solidarity.